Guys, sorry it's taking me so long to get these uh, other videos loaded up. My internet's kind of gone bad at the house. So I got into the school here today, and we're going to finish them up. And I hope everybody's doing great. This will be the last couple units before we're done with the school uh, year. So um, we were talking about the Vietnam War and kind of the escalation of it. Um, Ho Chi Minh was the leader of the North Vietnamese uh, Communist Forces. Forces. And the United States kind of gets into Vietnam because we don't want the domino theory um, happening where one country falls to communism and then the next country beside it will and so on. So we were going and we, weren't, we were fighting not only the communist um, army of the NVA or North Vietnamese army, we were also fighting the Viet Cong. And the Viet Cong were farmers by day and guerrillas by night. They're very patient people willing to accept many casualties, um, and the United States will uh, underestimate their resolve and their resourcefulness. Um, Ho Chi Minh uses a Mao Zedong, who was the leader of China. Um, his kind of viewpoint of it, where the guerrilla wins if he does not lose, the conventional army loses if he does not win. Um, and so the guerrillas were willing to wait out as long as they could in this war, and eventually they knew that we would tire of it and withdraw. Um, in 1967, the United States Army General Westmoreland, who is the leader of the U.S. Armed Forces in Vietnam, can say, says, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, we'd made progress um, up until 1967. And our military was starting to see advances, um, and we were seeing that we could maybe win the war. But in 1967, some things happened, and it kind of turns the tide against the U.S. Army fighting, like the viewpoint of the American people, the world, this and that. And you start to see a lot of anti-war protest um, and things like that. And then... The politicians will step in and kind of handcuff the army, and from there on, um, we kind of start the decline of the war. In January of 1968, there will be the Tet Offensive, and that's really kind of the turning point of the war. Um, the North Vietnamese Army, North Vietnam and South Vietnam, had decided to have the ceasefire. They weren't going to fight on the Chinese New Year of Tet. They said that is a holiday, nobody's going to fight, this and that. So kind of everybody lets their guard down, and the North Vietnamese will come in and attack on those days. Um, the North Vietnamese Army and the Viet Cong attack south simultaneously. 67,000 um, will attack 100 cities, U.S. bases, and the U.S. embassy in Saigon. They're able to take every major southern city. But the United States and South Vietnamese forces were able to drive back the offensive. The Viet Cong will be destroyed in a lot of areas. And the army, the North Vietnamese army, will be um, kind of slowed down. Um, it is actually a um, victory for the United States um, because we were able to stop them and drive them back and slow them down. But the media comes in and portrays it as a defeat for the American army and the American forces, and that kind of acts as the turning point of the war because then the media really starts to portray um, the Americans as the bad guys, unfortunately. The impact of the Tet Offensive um, – Domestic and U.S. reaction, disbelief, anger, distrust of the Johnson administration. The tide, as I said, the tide turns. People really start um, not trusting our government even more. They get upset um, with our troops, with our government, this and that. And they start protesting even more for the war to end. Johnson's popularity, popularity will drop. From in 1968, from 48 to 36 percent, and he realizes that he's probably not going to be reelected. So in March 1968, President Johnson announces, "I shall not seek and will not accept the nomination of my party for another term as president." After the Tet Offensive, American morale will begin to drop as well. There's going to be a disapproach, disproportionate. Um, representation of poor people and minorities. Um, people were being drafted into the uh, armed forces during this time, and a lot of the time it was coming from poor communities or the African-American and um, 
Hispanic American communities. They were going in and they were drafting these people um, from those communities and sending them off to fight the war. Um, there were severe racial problems, uh, major drug problems as well. Once they got over there, um, a lot of them got into a lot of the drug trade, um, especially heroin um, and other drugs in um, Vietnam. And one, one other big problem is, is the officers, um, which will be your lieutenants, your captains, your generals, colonels, things like that, were in combat for six months, and then they were sent um, to the rear for six months. Enlisted men or drafted men were um, on the front lines fighting for full years at a time before they got any leave time, so that presents a problem. And then also in 1968, uh, there will be an affair called the Melee Massacre, where uh, L Lieutenant William Colley and his platoon of American soldiers will go into a village searching for Viet Cong guerrillas, and they actually murder 200 to 500 unarmed villagers. They kind of, they get in there, they're looking for these um, Viet Cong. They can't really find them. They start suspecting people who really weren't. Um, all of a sudden, these 18-year-old kids that are being drafted, sending over there, start to panic. One person shoots, and then they gun down the um, villagers. And it gets brought to the light by the U.S. media. Um, will it, uh, Lieutenant Colley will be put um, on trial for war crimes and convicted. But it kind of shows some of the bad stuff that we do. At the same time, you have anti-war demonstrations going on um, across the United States at U.S. universities. Um, Columbia and Cal, uh, the University of California at Berkeley will be um, two of the first big protests. You also have famous um, musicians and actresses or actors that will be for the anti-war movement. Jane Fonda actually goes over to North Vietnam. She spends um, millions of dollars in helping the North Vietnamese. And so a lot of people, especially that were in the American Army, um, will consider Jane Fonda to be a traitor. Uh, she was a famous actress of the time, and she spent money um, to help the North Vietnamese fight and kill Americans, so people consider her a traitor. Um, other anti-war demonstrations, May 4th, 1970, four students will be shot dead and 11 students will be wounded at Kent State University. There were several um, anti-war protests going on, um, and at Kent State, they were having a big protest. The Ohio National Guard was called in to kind of regulate these protests. And the class is let out, and the campus is getting to be filled with thousands of young college students that are coming out of their classes and coming out of these buildings. The protesters then start to get a little, a little more ruckus to put on a show for these people that are being released from their classes. And again, um, the young people that were in the National Guard will panic and open fire and kill four students and wounded 11 others. Six days later, on May 10th, this kind of the same thing will happen at Jackson State University in Mississippi, um, and it will end up with two being killed and 12 wounded. In 1968, Richard Nixon will be elected as president. Um, his campaign promised an end to the war. Um, his call for the end of the war was what he called a peace, peace with honor. Um, and he appealed to the great silent majority. His plan with his peace with honor is called Vietnamization, where the, over time, Vietnam, South Vietnam, their army was going to start taking over the war efforts, and we were going to start pulling um, troops out slowly. The thing is, is he actually expands the war. With his secret war, he sends in troops to Cambodia and Laos, and we start using a thing called Agent Orange um, to spray over the jungles and kill off all the foliage. The problem is, is that Agent Orange um, 
had a devastating effect um, on American soldiers that then would go through that jungle. Um, it caused several neuro neurological disorders for the um, American soldiers that went through there. And I'm going to finish with that with this video. Um, I hope everybody's doing great. I'm going to put another one on here in a little bit. Talk to you all later. Bye.